some of the topics on this week's Best Docs Network show featuring Forest Park Medical Centers, functional rhinoplasty with ENT and facial plastic surgeon Dr. Colin Perro, artificial cervical disc with neurosurgeon Dr. Jeffrey Caterini, balloon sinoplasty with ENT Dr. Allison Weil, and heart disease with Dr. Richard Brillando. Hi again everyone, I'm Candace Kruger along with Jim Knox. We're back again with another edition of the Best Docs Network featuring Forest Park Medical Centers, one of the premier medical centers in the entire North Texas area. Exactly right Candace, a number of outstanding physicians operate right out of Forest Park Medical Centers along with our first physician that we're going to introduce who's helped a number of people lose a lot of weight. He certainly has, Jim. He's one of the top bariatric surgeons in all of North Texas. And for more on him, let's check in with Kelsey Reich. Thanks, Candace. Our next doctor is one of the best bariatric surgeons in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. His name is Dr. David Kim. Erin's a lovely 27-year-old who struggled with her weight pretty much throughout her entire young adult life. And so after lots of different things like diet <laughs> that exist and diet pills, she was not able to lose weight. Before I came to see Dr. Kim, I was starting to have some health issues. I had thyroid issues, I was borderline diabetic, and I was ready to do something about that before they became major health issues. I was already starting to take medications that I didn't feel like I should really be on at my age. Erin and I sat down and chatted about the different options that were available yeah, for so her. She chose gastric yeah, sleeve so surgery. This is awesome. And this was a, a great fit for her because she has a very active life. What really drew me to this sleeve surgery was that there was no in device that would be implanted into my stomach and it was not as extreme as the gastric bypass. The operation allowed her to lose a tremendous amount of weight. In a year she lost almost 100 pounds and she was able to then have a, a life that everyone wants to have as a young person. Once I started seeing the results, um, I was really motivated to keep going and to keep eating healthy and to keep going to the gym every day and just mainly the results are what really keeps you going. Sleeve surgery, though the operation does entail physically reconstructing someone's stomach, what a patient is required to do after surgery would be nothing different than what other people are expected to do, which is to practice portion control as well as wise nutrition choices and trying to get some exercise every day. And when they do these practical steps along with good sleeve surgery, patients can do marvelously well. When I go shopping, um, you know, people are actually interested in helping me. The people in the stores now, they're more willing to help me. Um, they pull clothes for me, um, and shopping is fun. I don't have to go to specialty stores anymore, and I can wear heels before I could never wear high heels, and shopping is just a lot of fun for me now. Anne was suffering from severe sinus problems, and she credits Dr. Colin Perro for helping change her life. To find out more about Anne's story and other life-changing stories, log on to BestDocsNetwork.com. I had pain in my right knee, and at that time I did what's called a procedure called microfracture surgery, which is a normal procedure where you infuse blood and air to create a cartilage-like feel in your knee, and that was in my right knee. Then in 2010, I had a pain in my left knee, and at that time is when Dr. Michelson told me about the new procedure called Cardacil. ACI is basically stands for, it's an acronym for autologous, which means from the same patient, um, chondrocyte implantation. And it's a procedure that's done for cartilage damage in the knee. So essentially, uh, the surgery is a two-stage procedure. 
The initial surgery is where the knee is scoped and any other abnormalities within the knee are taken care of. The second surgery is a more extensive surgery involving what we call an arthrotomy, complete opening of the joint. The cells are implanted at that time and then the patient goes through a little bit more extensive recovery. That recovery starts off slow, sometimes using crutches and braces and not bearing weight on their leg, to about eight weeks where they're without brace, walking on it. But those cells take time to mature, and that mat maturation occurs over the course of about a year. In May of 2011, we went in and uh, took out cells so we could grow the cartilage and then we had the full surgery in December to uh, sew in the grown cartilage and, and go from there. Within three months I was back at the gym on a pretty regular basis and then within six months I was doing even more strenuous exercise and then now at uh, ten months later I'm actually jogging on a treadmill. It has been all but the whole back the reins on him. Um, he's been he's back up, he's running, he's jogging, saying that his knee feels better than it has in a very long time. He's had an excellent outcome. It's funny, you know, when you first have the surgery, all you think is about that knee. You feel it in everything you do in every walk of life right after the surgery. But then, of course, today, I don't even think about the knee now. And that's probably the best endorsement of all. Dr. Michelson is a really good doctor. Thank you, Dr. Michelson, for uh, giving me my legs back, so to speak. Vastox Network featuring Forest Park Medical Center. Forest Park Medical Center, extraordinary in every way. The number one killer in the United States for both men and women is heart disease. And our next doctor, Dr. Richard Berlando, helped one individual detect this disease early. I have a long history with Dr. Berlando. And normally when I come in, it's congestion in the bronchial tubes and stuff, which from asthma and stuff, I'm used to it. So I kind of know my body and stuff, and I get right in and stuff. Uh, drove home, 1,000 miles each way, and I came back, and I thought I was just getting a little sick again. So I called him, and he said, come in. And uh, he did what he does. And uh, Dr. Berlando said, said, Dallas, I think something else is different. I don't like this. So did an EKG, and um, he didn't like the way that looked because it was different from the last time. They did an angiogram, and they were like, you can't leave. <laughs> And I'm like, what do you mean I can't leave? He said, well, you don't have to have it. He said, but you won't have a heart attack and go through rehab and get better. He said, you'll drop dead. So I stayed in the hospital and, and did open heart surgery. And uh, thanks to Dr. Berlando being observing, I'm here. The, uh, the worrisome thing about Dallas when he came in to see me was that he has asthma. And uh, we were just assumed that this was another asthma episode, but the characteristics of this pain were a little bit different. And I said, gee whiz, we've got to do a little bit of diagnostic testing here. And sure enough, uh, just had to get him in with the specialist in a real punctual fashion to get this looked at and thank goodness uh, we had intervened early. Uh, as much as early detection is important, prevention is the key here and that's what we're all about in, in our practice. When I went to the ER, I came right in, they did an uh, echocardiogram um, and they did another test and stuff and those, those were fine. They did the angiogram and once they got started, he like, uh, we got a problem. And once he said he got a, we got a problem, he showed me what the problem was and Sunday morning at 7 o'clock they came and got me and did the surgery, had a double bypass. And that's the thing about coronary disease, it can really play for keeps and we just have to be so diligent about this, uh, the guys especially, after age 40, so we can uh, keep them out of trouble. In general I feel good, you know, I'm up every day, I go to work every day, I think I've used it, uh, two sick days and two years, you know, don't miss work, you know, I'm good. Yeah. For the prevention of coronary disease, a number of things come to mind. Uh, very aggressive smoking cessation uh, will often help people with some, uh, some of the improved medications. If you have an inclination, something's not right, follow your first thought. Go get it checked out. Did you know that Forest Park Medical Center is equipped with a high-tech tube system that sends stat lab work from any location in the hospital to the lab. This enables the lab to test samples quickly for better patient care. Forest Park Medical Center set themselves apart by being committed to providing their physicians the latest state-of-the-art technology in medicine, as this week we feature the Makoplasty Robot. Before we even um, start the surgery on the patient, we actually review the plan. The 3D analysis that uh, was obtained from the CAT scan 
allows us to see the knee in real time. And this allows us to see the orientation, the alignment, and actually the size of the implant that we'll use. So I can actually look with 3D technology to see exactly what the implant looks like, the alignment, the rotation. As we get into the surgery, I can actually make adjustments in surgery to balance the ligaments inside of the knee uh, as well. So once we place these pins into the bone, we attach what we call arrays uh, to the pins. And this allows us to consistently always know the position of the bones at all times. Once we register both the patient's anatomy and register the robot, then the next uh, step is to actually begin the surgery itself. So I can slowly chisel away the bone that's necessary. When I look at the screen, the green data tells me the extra bone that I must remove. What's critical is this robot will not allow me to go outside of the plan that we've instituted uh, in the very beginning of surgery. The surgeon is actually still doing the surgery. The robot is just allowing uh, the surgeon to do it in a more precise manner because the robot will not let me deviate from the plan at hand. Then the next step is to trial or place the implant to see if it fits correctly. And as you can see, it's perfectly aligned, the rotation is perfect, and as a surgeon, it's very exciting to see uh, that we can do this reproducibly, consistently, and do it successfully. This technology allows us to do the surgery uh, with the smallest incisions possible. Our patients are recovering much quicker than the traditional approaches. The Pink Love Dance is put on by Medline so we can raise um, money and awareness for um, breast cancer research. And um, they've opened this up to hospitals to contribute their own version of how they're gonna fight uh, breast cancer. And it's a competition that Medline sends out pink gloves for. And people put together our dance, uh, have it videotaped, uh, have their staff, uh, survivors participating in making the video and then it's uh, sent back to Medline and then just upon via YouTube. Um, and then the winner brings home $10,000 to donate to the charity of their choice. Uh, second place winner gets 5,000 and third place gets 3,000. And here at Forest Park, we wanted to be a part of it because we understand the importance of the community being aware of the dangers, the risks, and how to prevent breast cancer. It was important to me that not only the staff get involved in the video, but it was from top to bottom. So we had made sure that the uh, CEO, myself, the CNO, and um, a lot of the directors were involved, and then the frontline staff that are that see patients every day, and then all the way down to uh, I wanted to see if housekeeping or anyone else would participate to make sure that everyone knew what our team was able to put together. When we first sat down with Best Stocks and we looked at a storyline, the scenes, you know, that was when I really got the most excited because it was like these are all the ideas that we had and now they're going to happen. Now they're on paper. This is how it's going to look. And it got me really excited. And so I just took snippets of that to my staff and to other people in the hospital. I'm like, look, you got to come. This is what we're going to be doing. Doesn't this look so cool? It, I mean, it's going to be so much fun. We didn't want to be the same as everybody else. Everybody seemed to have, you know, the choreographed dancing, the line dancing. We wanted our video uh, to tell a story. It was a beautiful team building opportunity for my entire team. They had the opportunity to come together. We, we filmed on a Sunday when the hospital doesn't have a lot of people here. And we had an opportunity to just come together as a team and act silly. It was really surreal because we created that scene there in, in our lobby of, you know, being out and it's a big party and it looks like a big party and like you're at, um, I hate to say a club, but like, you know, a big scene type event. And, you know, coming back the next morning, you're like, wow, where did, where did everything go? It's so different. It's just, it's the lobby again. It, it was a lot of hard work and at the end of the day we were all tired, but then when you put it in perspective with those that have actually fought breast cancer and, and battled the disease and known what they went through, it made it all that much easier and worth it. To watch the full video, go to pinklovedance.com and be sure to vote for Forest Park Medical Center. 
As always, for more information on any of the doctors you've seen on today's show, just go to our website, bestdocsnetwork.com, and click on the Forest Park Medical Center tab. Exactly right, Candace. You know, Forest Park Medical Center and their physicians are dedicated in helping change people's lives. Like our next physician as we head out to Kelsey Reich. Kelsey? Thanks, Jim. That's right. Our next doctor is one of the best neurosurgeons in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. It's Dr. Jeffrey Caterini, and he's here to discuss the artificial cervical disc. About 10 years ago, I was having a lot of shoulder pain, and I had seen several doctors prior to that, and they told me that I had a problem at C6, C7 and I was looking at surgery and a possible spinal fusion. So I called my friend who works in critical care and I said, who's the best neurosurgeon out there? And she gave me Jeffrey Caterini's name. So I went to him and he said, your symptoms don't fit your MRI, your MRI is wrong. And I had seen four previous physicians prior to that and Dr. Caterini is the one that caught it. I get emotional. One of the procedures we offer here at uh, in the practice is the insertion of a cervical artificial disc. We see patients the age 20 to 55 who have a soft tissue disc herniation or one level disc disease and they typically present with one-sided neck pain and arm pain. He came and sat right down next to me and he showed me the artificial disc and the way it worked and the way he would screw it in and I said you know what that's a metal disc ball and joint, that makes sense to me. You know, I didn't like the, the idea of pulling bone out of my joint or out of my hip and then fusing my neck and I have limited range of motion. That just didn't make sense. The good thing about the artificial disc is it is not restricting movement, it's keeping movement. Um, and there's no need for a uh, cervical collar post-op or there's no need for a bone growth stimulator post-op because you do not want to promote a fusion. And I woke up from surgery, the pain that I had had for over a year was gone. And I just bawled. So right after the surgery, I was out there playing tennis immediately with absolutely no pain. Best decision of my life. Nancy did great post-op. She returned to her activities. She's actually referred friends from out of state for the artificial disc. And she's very happy with the results and she's got great range of motion go to a neurosurgeon. They're meticulous and especially go to Dr. Jeffrey Caterini because he's, he's outstanding. Many individuals suffer from chronic sinus infections, but our next physician, Dr. Allison Weil, has a unique procedure that can help with just that. Before I came to see Dr. Weil, I had been suffering for about two years of just dull headaches, not feeling good, stuffy. On paper, I am healthy, but I just was tired of not feeling good. I noticed on exam that Kathy did have a deviated septum. I obtained a CAT scan of her sinuses, which didn't show a, a considerable amount of sinus disease or inflammation, but it did show that her, the natural openings to her sinuses were very narrowed. And so I felt that she would benefit uh, one from a septoplasty to, by straightening her septum. Uh, in addition, I thought she would be an excellent candidate for the balloon sinuplasty procedure. We actually did a CT scan to check my sinuses. There was nothing on that that she found. She thought maybe I was allergic to some things, so she said, Kathy, let's do a blood test. Let's do that first before we go in and become invasive on you. We did that. She called me and said, Kathy, you're negative. You're not showing allergic to anything. What I suggest for you, there's this procedure out called balloon sinuplasty. The balloon sinuplasty device is a uh, device that has been around for about five years. It's a very minimally invasive way of entering into the sinuses. We take a small, thin, lighted wire that's, and we guide that into the sinus. At that point, we advance the balloon over the wire into the narrow passageway of the sinus, and then we dilate open the balloon and that opens up the sinus opening. And at that point, we remove the balloon and the sinus opening actually remains patent in over 92% of the patients. I sell real estate, so I made sure I didn't have any appointments that week, but as far as talking on the phone and getting up and feeling okay, I was fine. 
The balloon sinuplasty device can be done either in office or in the uh, hospital setting. The majority of patients benefit from it in the hospital setting because in addition to opening up their sinuses, like Kathy, she also needed a septoplasty, straightening out her septum. And so doing them in combination while she's asleep under general anesthesia was the best for her. My life has been totally changed since I've had this surgery. I have never felt better in my life. I have more energy. I feel like I got the Kathy back that I knew and I just feel great. Van Stocks Network feature in Forest Park Medical Center. Welcome to the 21st century of cutting edge medicine. Forest Park Medical Center. In our practice, we take a team approach to the nutritional aspects of bariatric surgery. And we feel that Patient education is, you know, first and foremost. I have a registered dietitian, I have a nurse practitioner, both of whom are very knowledgeable about uh, nutrition in general, but also uh, nutrition of, uh, for bariatric patients. After doing a dental switch, there are a lot of changes that happen uh, in a person's body. Having undergone the procedure personally and having a medical background as a medical doctor, uh, that is, I feel, my role in this office. I like to take people from where they are, educate them about the procedure, make sure they understand what they're getting into before they ever commit to going under the knife, and then afterwards understanding the changes that they've done and how to maximize their health. Dr. Buse has actually been involved with our patients, even though not officially, through uh, his interactions on Facebook and other media. He has uh, started uh, at least a couple of uh, support groups and goes to the meetings and talks with people. And so we've just had a lot of patients who said, where can I see Dr. Buse? Now that we're op opening our office in Frisco, and now that he's re relocated to Frisco, that's gonna be a perfect opportunity to get him involved and in actually seeing patients in our office you know, along right alongside with us, and we're really excited about that. After doing a dental switch, there are a lot of changes that happen uh, in a person's body, uh, metabolically uh, and physically. Not only do people lose weight, but they absorb nutrients and vitamins and minerals uh, and calories in a whole different way. We, we try to take just kind of a holistic approach uh, to making sure that they are doing what they can to supplement well and to get as much of the nutrition they can through the foods that they eat give patients what we feel are solid guidelines which will help them to maintain their nutrition. If the patients will take the time to spend the time with me or my staff, eventually we can solve the, whatever the issues are. Brothers Brock and Brady experienced multiple injuries due to sports. They credit Dr. Stephen Michelson who got them back in the game. To find out more about this story, log on to BestDocsNetwork.com. We're here with one of Forest Park Medical Center's top bariatric surgeons, Dr. David Kim. Dr. Kim, thanks for being with us today. Thanks for asking me to come to this interview. Absolutely, it's our pleasure. Now start off by talking to us just a little bit about what made you decide to practice medicine and specifically bariatrics. I always knew when I was a little kid I wanted to be a doctor. Um, I, I always enjoyed helping people and, and it, if you enjoy those kinds of things and, and science, then medicine becomes a natural fit for any young boy or girl. And so that, that always compelled me to go through the entire career of medicine and becoming a doctor. And then my fascination with anatomy led into surgery. And so I've performed lots of different kinds of operations. I uh, performed a general surgery residency. Then I did a vascular surgery fellowship where we're basically replumbing clogged up arteries. And what I loved about bariatrics was we really have a chance to improve somebody's health and possibly prevent a lot of complications from occurring. That's great. And what would you say is the most re rewarding aspect of it? What people will often say is, well, thank you for my second life after bariatric surgery because they really had a suppressed life before. They weren't able to do the things that they wanted to do before the operation. And now they'll, they'll actually remember the date that they had surgery 
and they'll actually call that their second birthday. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's got to be an amazing feeling for you. It's a lot of fun. You. It's a lot of fun to see that happen. Yeah. One of the operations I perform has almost a hundred percent cure rate of diabetes. Wow. And that's really cool to that's see. Great. And you know, Forest Park Medical Center is obviously growing very rapidly within a competitive hospital market as Dallas-Fort Worth. In your words, why should a patient choose Forest Park Medical Center to have their procedure? Forest Park Medical Center Dallas performs more weight loss surgery than any other single institution in America. Patients can feel comfortable that not only are the doctors committed to the field of weight loss, but so are the nurses, techs. Everyone that they run into in that hospital understands that they're important, that patient is important going into the operation. So as you say that Forest Park strives to be more of a personalized facility, personalized hospital? Absolutely, because they would not be a center of excellence in bariatric surgery if they didn't accomplish all those things. That's great. Well, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure. It's, been, it's my pleasure, too. And coming up next, we'll take a look at another Forest Park physician that's changing people's lives. So, uh, at my fitness center, and I was playing basketball, and I was reaching out to get to get the ball, and somebody's forehead actually slammed into the bridge of my nose and uh, broke my nose immediately. I, I immediately knew I broke it because I heard a pop. Often patients come in uh, and have either seen previous doctors or oftentimes had previous surgery where it's been inadequate in, in assessing those um, outside parts of the nose. And so when we see the patients, we um, obviously take a, a very careful history from them and to do a careful examination. And if we determine that uh, they have a problem in which the outside portion of the nose is contributing to their obstruction, that's typically when we recommend functional rhinoplasty. I noticed that I was having breathing problems. Throughout the day, I, no I would notice that uh, uh, I'm struggling to, uh, to breathe, and especially at nighttime. Uh, while I'd be sleeping, I would wake up in the middle of the night sometimes and just gasp for breath. And I have never in my entire life had problems like that. The surgery is highly individualized based on the patient's individual problems. And it can last anywhere from an hour and a half to four or five hours sometimes, depending on the complexity of the problem and the patient's individual history. Have they had previous surgery? What types of collapse are they having? How much cartilage they have left over in their nose? And do we need to reconstruct that possibly with even cartilage from elsewhere in the body? After the surgery, I woke up and uh, had the splints. I had the, the bandages on the nose. So I, would, I was not able to actually breathe at, d directly after the surgery. The recovery period, I think, was around two to three days for me. Although there is some discomfort associated with the surgery, most patients, uh, by a week or two after surgery, are very glad they've had it done. Not only are they breathing better, but they're pleased with the outside appearance of the nose. A week after the surgery, he removed the splints and uh, the bandages on the, on the bridge of my nose. That's when I took my first breath. And I immediately knew that something has changed because I was breathing out of both nostrils, which I've never done before in my entire life. It was a life-altering experience. Uh, I remember I was at his office and I was just so happy and <laughs> I think I gave Dr. Farrow a hug. <laughs> that will do it. That'll wrap up another edition of the Best Docs Network featuring Forest Park Medical Centers, one of the top medical centers in the North Texas area. That's right, Jim. And for more information on any of the fine doctors that you've seen on today's show, just head to our website at bestdocsnetwork.com and be sure to click on the Forest Park Medical Center tab. That's right. And if you have a question or comment for us, we'd love to hear from you. Send us an email at info at bestdocsnetwork.com. So long, everyone. We'll see you next week.